So we saw the basics of the markup and based on cost and based on selling price in the last hour. Let's do some examples that kind of bring out all the details. So let's, and I'm just gonna list this out shorthand so to save some space. So let's say we have an item that costs $120. And we have a dollar markup of, well, let's do $42. Find the percent markup on cost. So let's do our table. Cost plus markup equals, equals selling price. And again, I'm always going to start out by locating where the 100% goes. In this case, are we based on cost or are we based on selling price? On cost. So 100% goes on cost. Do we know any other percents? No, we don't. On the other side, we know that the cost is $120. We know that the markup is $42. We could find the selling price here easy enough just by adding, but do we need the selling price? Well, what are we asked to find? We're asked to find the percent markup. That's this here. So we don't need to even know the dollar selling price, so we won't bother with that. So we're going to cross multiply and divide. 100 times 42 is 4,200 divided by 120 is going to give us, is that 35? So the percent markup on cost is 35% of the cost. So let's say we have an item that costs $60 and the dollar markup is $20. Find the percent markup on the selling price. So again, we'll set up our table. Cost plus markup equals selling price. For cents and dollars still. Again, we're going to start out by locating the 100%. Where is it going to go this time? On the selling price. Very good. Do we know any other percents? No. So for the dollars, we have a cost of 60, a markup of 20. Now, since we have the 100% on the selling price, we're probably going to need to know the dollar selling price. How are we going to find that? 60 plus 20 is $80. We're asked to find the percent markup. So that's this one right here. So we don't need the cost this time. Perfect. 100 times 20 is 2,000. Divided by 80 is 25. So there's a 25% markup on the selling price. I'm usually pretty nice on tests. So if we have an item that costs $70, 
and it is a 30% markup on the selling price. Find the selling price. So same table, cost plus markup equals selling price. Percent and dollars. Always start with the 100%. Where's it going to go this time? Markup is on the selling price. So 100 goes there. What else do we know? Do we know any other percents? 30% markup. Very good. Now we have a $70 cost. So that goes on the dollar side. And now here we can very quickly find the percent for the cost. We have to work backwards, remember now. 100 minus 30 would be 70% is the cost. The cost is 70% of the selling price. The markup is 30%. And we're finding the selling price, this one here. So actually what doesn't matter here is the markup. Because we have to have one item where we know both numbers, and in this case, that'll be the cost. We have the percent and the dollar amount for the cost. Then we have to have the item that has the missing value that we're trying to find. Oh, okay. So the markup is missing the one value, but that's okay because we're not dealing with it. Yeah, once we have the selling price, we'll be able to find the dollar markup if we want it. So 100 times 70 is 7,000. Divided by 70 is 100. The selling price is $100. I'm pretty sure he's been looking at that to figure out how much. You probably could have. So let's take an item that has a cost of. $192 has a 20% markup on selling price. I'm going to ask you to find the dollar markup. So again, chart is cost. Plus markup equals selling price. So we know all 20% of the well, where's the 100% going to go? On the selling price. Right there. 20% goes on the markup. And the 192 goes on the cost, the dollar cost. So now the percent for the cost is 80, yes. 100 minus 20 gives us 80% for the cost. What are we asked to find here? The dollar markup, right there. So you're right, the selling price is the row that doesn't matter. Don't get ahead of me, Cody. Stay, let me get it, don't get ahead of me, okay? Wait till I ask you. So now that we get rid of the selling price, we're looking for the dollar amount of the markup. We are going to cross multiply and divide. So it is going to be 20 times 192, 3,840, divided by 80, which is going to give us what? 48. Very good. So $48 is our dollar markup. Any questions so far? Okay. So, let's say that we are given that we have an item that is marked up by $54. And it is a 60% Markup on cost. I'm going to ask you to find the cost.
Cost plus markup equals selling price again. Percents and dollars. Okay. So as always, first step is to find out where the 100% is going to go. This time it is on cost. So the 100% goes in the cost. What else do we know? 60% markup and $54 markup. Now we can very quickly find the selling price would be 160%. In this case, I don't think we're going to need that number. What is it that we're asked to find here? The dollar cost, the amount of the cost, which is this number. So we're not going to need the selling price. Have to have the markup because we know both numbers and the cost is what we're looking for. So 100 times 54 is 5,400 divided by 60, which is going to give us $90. So the cost is $90. Any questions? So let's have an item where we have a dollar markup of $32. And we have a 40% markup on cost. This time, find the selling price. So we're going to start out the exact same. Cost plus markup. Equal selling price. Where do we start? 100% goes on the cost. Good. What else do we know? Forty percent is the markup, and thirty-two dollars is the dollar markup. So that goes here. What are we asked to find? This dollar selling price. The selling price. So that means we do need to know this one here. It's going to be one forty. Good. One hundred plus forty is one forty. So we're not going to need the top row. That's the one that's missing the number. So we're going to cross multiply and divide. 140 times 32 is 4480. Is that four, 40, 480? Somebody help me out there. It's late at night. Okay, good. Divided by 40, which is going to give us 112. So 112 is the selling price. How are we doing so far? Okay, good. And so we're given a dollar markup of $62. And it is a 70% markup on selling price. Find the cost. So we have our chart. Cost plus markup equals selling price again. Where do we start? Bless you. Where's our 100% go? 112. This time it's markup on selling price. The 100% is going to go with the selling price. 70% is the markup. Well, we're at it. Let's fill in the cost would be 
thirty percent. Okay, sixty-three dollars goes on the dollar side of the markup, and we're asked to find the cost. This one here. So that's the selling price we're not going to use. So thirty times sixty-three, eighteen hundred and ninety. Divided by 70, which is going to be what? Is that 27? Perfect, thank you. Okay, time for me to make you try a few. Let's say we have a dollar markup of Oh, let's see here. $270. And we have a 45% markup on selling price. Find the selling price. Try that one in your notes, Carl. Okay, so first step, where does the 100 go? And selling price. Good. What else do we know? Forty-five percent for the markup, which would make the cost what? One hundred minus forty-five is fifty-five percent. What else do we know? 270 is the dollar amount of the markup, and we're looking for the selling price here. So we don't really need the cost. 100 times 270 is 27,000. Divided by 45 is $600. Good. Thank you. Let's do another one. So you have an item that costs $196. So the 30% markup on selling price. Find the dollar markup. Again, try that one in your notes quick. So for this one, the 100% again is in the selling price. 30% markup. While we're at it, that will make the cost what? 70. 70. Good. What else do we know? Cost of $196. We're asked to find markup. We can get rid of the selling price here. 30 times 196 is 5880, I believe. Divided by 70 is what? $84. So the dollar amount of the markup is $84. So let's say we have something with a selling price of $480, and we have a percent markup on cost of 60%. Find the cost. So where's the 100 go? 
cost. Perfect. 60% is a markup. So this time it'll make the selling price 160. What else do we know? $480 goes on the selling price. And we are asked to find the dollar cost. So I can ignore the markup this time around. 100 times 480 divided by 160 is 300. $300 cost. So let's say we have a cost of $72. And a selling price of $108. Find the dollar market. I put the table up here even though I didn't really need to. Um, some of you might be looking at this thinking he didn't give us percent on cost or percent on selling price. How do we know the 100 goes? Well, it doesn't matter. Cost is $72. Selling price is $108. We're asked for the markup right there. All we have to do is subtract $36. Didn't need the table or the percent or anything. Okay, so let's say that we have a selling price that is $560. We have a cost of $400. Find the percent markup on cost. Okay, so the 100 goes on the cost. 560 is selling price. 400 is the cost. We are looking for the percent markup. So we need to know the dollar markup, which will be... 160, 560 minus 400. So I can ignore the selling price. 100 times 160 divided by 400 is 40. So it's a 40% markup on cost. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at converting percent markup on cost to a percent markup on selling price. So let's look at convert a 50% markup on cost to a percent markup on the selling price. First question, of course, that would come to mind is why would you ever want to do this? Well, it's, it's handy in different circumstances to have your markup done one way or the other. If I'm trying to set the price of an item, it's nice to have it as a percent markup on cost because I can take what it costs and mark it up by a percent of that number. Now on the other side of it though, if we're looking at sales tax or, or other calculations like that or looking at profits or, or things like that, a lot of times we can take our total revenue off the cash register and if we knew a percent of the the selling price, we can figure out what is our markup based off of that and use that to figure out if we made a pro if we covered overhead, covered other expenses, 
and if we made a profit or not. So it is actually quite common to convert between the two. So if we have a 50% markup on cost, what that's telling us is the cost is 100%, the markup is 50%, and that would make the selling price 150%. But now we're not trying to deal with any dollar amounts at all here. We're not trying to find any, any actual dollars for any of these three items. So what we have on the left side here is the percent markup on cost. And what we're really looking for on the other side is the percent on the selling price. Well, you might be looking at this thing, well, we don't know anything about the, the percent on selling price. We're in fact, we're trying to find this percent markup on the selling price. But we always know 1%, and that is the 100%. And where's that going to go on this side? On the selling price. Over here, it was on cost, the 100% went with the cost. On this side, we're looking at the selling price, so the 100% goes under the selling price. And this is really all we have to do to convert. We're looking for this number here, so I can ignore the cost row. We have, oops, we have 50 times 100 is 5,000, and we can divide by 150, which is going to give us 33.33%. So a 50% markup on cost is 33 and one-third, or 33.33%, Markup on selling price. Yes, 33 and one third or 33.33333. Yeah. Sure. How about we convert a 25% markup on selling price to a percent markup on cost? Well, it's the same thing, cost plus markup equals selling price. In this case, we have 25% on selling price. So 100 is going to go here, 25% markup. The cost is going to be 75%. And we're converting it to markup on cost. So right now, this side represents the percent on the selling price. This side, since we're converting it to cost, is going to represent the percent on the cost. And what do we know has to happen? What has to go on this side here? 100% has to go under the cost. Again, over here, this is percent on selling price. 100% goes with the selling price. Over here, we're looking at percent on cost. The 100 goes with the cost. And we're trying to find the percent markup. Ignore the selling price. 25 times 100 is 2,500. Divided by the 75 is going to give us, once again, 33.33%. How are we doing? So let's try this. I'm going to have you convert. Forty percent markup on selling price to a percent markup on cost. Let's see if you can make that work in the notes. So, so we have 40% markup on selling price, so 100 goes on selling price, 40% is the markup. The cost would then be 60%. So over here, this is the percent on selling price because I put 100% in the selling price. 
So on the other side, it has to be percent on cost. And the 100% is going to have to go on the cost. And again, we're looking for the percent markup on cost. We're looking for that number. So we'll cross multiply. 40 times 100 is 4,000. Divided by 60 is 66.67 percent, or 66 and two thirds percent. How many of you got that? Okay. Anybody not sure where it came from? Comes from. Let's try another one. See how you do. So we convert this time a 40 percent markup on cost to a percent on selling price. Okay, so we're given percent markup on cost. So that means 100% will go on the cost. 40% markup. So we're going to combine 100 plus 40 is 140% is the selling price. And again, since the 100% went on cost, this side is percent on cost. Since this side is the percent markup on the cost, this side is going to be now the percent on selling price. And that tells us that the 100 is going, going to go on the selling price. And we're looking for the percent markup right there. So we don't need the top row. So we're going to do 40 times 100 is 4,000. Divided by 140 is what? 28.5714 about. 28.57 percent, we'll call it. Any questions? How many of you got 28.57? Okay. Do you guys see where we got? Anybody that doesn't see where we got the 28.57 needs another example or two. Okay. Well, then let's look at the next step. The next step we're looking at is discounts. Discounts can happen for several reasons. Um, something sits on the shelf for a certain amount of time and they just want to get rid of it. They can do a discount. Uh, maybe something goes out of season. Um, your winter jackets right now are out on the shelf because it's getting cold. Come January, the season for, for buying and selling winter jackets will be passed. They'll be marked down. There'll be a discount on them. Marked down. If you can find them, they might be sold out and you can't find one either. So you got to be careful with that. Um, and there are other reasons for markdowns. Maybe there's a new product coming out and they want to get the old stuff off the shelf. There are all sorts of reasons for markdown. If, so let's say we have an original price or a list price, whatever you want to call it, of $60. And we're going to go through... We're going to do a 30% markdown. Similar to what we did with our discounts in the, the invoicing with our cash discounts and with the trade discounts, we can look at this and say, okay, a 30% markdown from 100% means we're going to pay 70%. So to find the discounted price from the original price, we can take the original price times 70% or 0.7 to get the discounted price. So here we'll take the $60 times 0.7 get our discounted price is $42.
So if we have an item that is a list price of $40 and is going to do go through a 40% markdown, let's find the discounted price. So it's going to be $40 times what? A 40% markdown, you 100% minus 40%, which is going to be 60% or 0.6. 40 times 0.6 is $24. So after the discount, it's $24. Similar to, like, to our trade discounts where we could have a series of discounts for different reasons, um, we could have a series of markdowns. Let's say we have an item sitting on the shelf that was originally priced of $150. And let's say it sits there long enough that it goes through a 30% markdown. And after a while, new product comes out. We want to get it off the shelf. They might even move it to a different section for a clearance. And let's say it's going to go under an additional 40% markdown. Does that mean it's been marked down 70%? No. Just like with the trade discount, the markdowns are not done concurrently. They're not done at the same time. They're done consecutively, one after the other. So we start out with the $150 original price, and we're going to apply the first discount, the 30%. So that's going to be 100 minus 30, or 70%, or 0.7 is the price paid after the 30% discount. Then we're going to apply the 40% markdown. So that'll be 100 minus 40, or 60%, or 0.6 after the 60% discount. So now we multiply 150 times 0.7 times 0.6, which is going to give us what? $63, correct? So a pretty good markdown, yes. Um, effectively, it comes out to be, oh, what the heck is it? Yeah. So, careful. Um, it's, yeah, it ends up being like 51% marked down. Somewhere there. I'm still surprised that you need that. Yeah, electronics, unfortunately, don't tend to go out of style quite so easily. Yeah, they're also different from the well, yeah, especially computers. But anyway, um, let's take a look at um, something else that can happen here, something the book goes over. It's a little extreme, but we'll cover it. So let's say we have an item that has an original price of, now yeah, we'll just go 250 bucks. So again, let's say it sits on the shelf for a while. It's going to go through a markdown. of 20%, I don't know where the dollar sign came from, or 20%. It sits there for a while longer, and it's gone out of season. So now it's going to go through another markdown, this time of 60%. Well, let's say it sits there long enough, something happens, maybe it gets cold again, or, or whatever, so they decide to raise the price. It's going to go through a markup now of 90%. And it still doesn't sell, so they decide they're just going to get rid of it. It's going to go through a final markdown of 50%. Yeah. 
Rather than starting with the 250 and applying each of these markdowns and markups separately, we can do it all at once, just like we did with the chain of trade discounts. So I'm going to take my $250, I'm going to multiply. 20% discount means we're going to be left paying what percent? So 100 minus 20 is 80%. So 0.8. A 60% markdown means we're going to be left paying 100 minus 60 will be 0 0.4, 40%. Now, this is a mark up of 90%. So it's not going to be 100 minus 90. It's going to be 100 plus 90. So 190 or 1 1.9. It will come close. And then now a 50% markdown. So this one is 100 minus 50. Or 50% or 0.5. So now it's just a matter of multiplying them out. So it'll be 250 times 0.8 times 0.4, times 1.9, times 0.5, giving us oops, I'm not there go, $76. So the final price is $76. Believe it or not, after this 50% markdown here, it's still below what it would have been right here. I'll let you work through that on your own if you want to verify that. Um, it is time for our second break, so let's do that at 721. Let's start lecturing again at 731.